everyone and welcome to the aircraft certification channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rafaela Caio. In today's video, Clarissa will interview Filippi about passenger oxygen system. In this video, Filippi will start describing the different types of oxygen system, gaseous system and chemical system and their basic architecture. He will also talk about the main certification requirements and how the regulation changed after September 11th terrorist attacks. Clarissa and Filippi will discuss the main challenges regarding the development and certification of the passenger oxygen system. They will talk about rotorverse analysis and even how oxygen can affect ETOPS operation. In this amazing interview, Filippi quotes a NASA physicist Richard Feynman, and also a famous philosopher, Karl Popper. You can't really miss it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do it now so we can continue to prepare interesting content for you. I hope you like it and enjoy your journey. Hi, Filippi. Hello, Clarissa. How are you? Fine. Thank you for being here with us again. Thank you and Rafael for the inv invitation. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, today we'll be talking about the passenger oxygen system. And Filippi, before we start, can you introduce yourself for uh, who does, does not have uh, uh, watched your video before? Yes, yeah, so basically I've been working with aircraft design, uh, flight test and certification for the past 20 years and I've been involved in in several um, programs, okay, and uh, always on the fuel of air management system and oxygen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in the last few videos, you were talking about the fire hazards in the oxygen system, and today you'll be more focusing on the passenger. So, um, can you um, start uh, describing a little bit about the system? Before we do that, I'd like just to, to since you talked about the fire hazard, I'd like just to complement. A little bit of what we discussed on the crew oxygen system. Uh, the gases oxygen systems they have also a fire hazard and it needs to be analyzed during the refueling, okay, because of adiabatic uh, uh, compression. If the rate is too fast, it can lead to very high velocities and, and heat and therefore fire. So that's why we have to establish how fast the oxygen can be refueled, the cylinder. And also the, 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 the valve itself, the filler valve ha, is designed to, to, for a certain rate. And, but since we're also talking about, we're going to talk about the passenger oxygen system, Clarissa, I'd like to address an issue of fire hazard for the passenger oxygen system. Sure. Okay. So the passenger oxygen system, and we're going to go into more details a little, uh, a little bit later, it may be a gaseous, so it follows the same requirements as the as a crew oxygen system. And if it's gaseous, usually it's when we're talking about corporate uh, um, uh, oxygen, uh, uh, corporate aircraft and ETOPS operation ones. Um, especially the corporate jets because of the far one, one, the far 135, 157, that is very stringent considering the, the, the time of oxygen, a minimum of 30 minutes to each cabin occupant. Okay. The transport category it's a minimum of 10 minutes. So it, it allows, it's a more flexible, the use of chemical oxygen, okay? So the chemical oxygen is basically COG. Do you know what a COG is? Um, I would guess that would be chemical oxygen generator. That's a pretty good one, okay? You're gonna be like A plus, okay? okay? A plus. So it's basically, uh, which is nothing more like a sealed, reservoir, okay, that there are no hoses. So it, is, it contains a certain amount of chemical compound, which is um, sodium chloride. And whenever the masks drop, that's why you have to pull it. The moment we pull the masks, okay, there is a, 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 a clamp that is released that allows a trigger to start an exothermic uh, reaction. Okay, on the in the reservoir, so it's nothing more like so the sodium chloride combined with the heat, it results in oxygen and salt. 
Okay. So which means that the oxygen you be delivered to the passengers and the salt is re remains in that the, 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 the it's deposited and, and remains inside. Okay, uh, it, it's not it's not released and uh, the oxygen goes to the to each of the the cabin occupants. It's good because we call it passenger oxygen system, but we call cabin occupants. Anyone who's in the cabin is a cabin occupant. So we the passenger and the cabin crew. Okay, will be delivered the, um, the necessary amount of oxygen through the masks. So in this COG, so we have this uh, generators for each uh, set of uh, chairs, how, how the, the seats, how it works? It is distributed, okay, so the COGs, they may start from, because of the, the requirement, has something like, um, uh, you have to have provide a minimum of 10 minute oxygen supply to each of the, of the, the cabin occupants, so the COG, is designed, it suffices to provide uh, according to the size, so you're going to see we're going to have two cabin occupants, three cabin occupants, four cabin occupants, so they will design to be provided the amount of oxygen necessary for, for, for the number of, of seats which are, are assigned to, the, to that, to that side. Okay, so, so for example, even for the babies, when you have a baby that uh, Absolutely. doesn't have an assigned seat, so some, some places in the airplane is uh, you have uh, enough. Uh, so that's why the cabin crew knows exactly where the, the, the anyone carrying a baby or with children. So they're assigned, uh, um, let's say, specific seats, okay, on the aircraft. So the, the reservoir will provide an amount of 12, 14, 22 minutes. Usually they go up to 22 minutes, okay, of oxygen. And they also produce a lot of heat. Okay, so that's why I'm talking about a fine hazard. So there's a lot of heat that is produced in that. And uh, the, the, the surface can reach something like to almost 300 degrees Celsius. So the, the, the fire hazard has to do with the fact that we have to segregate any kind of, of, um, of equipment. Okay, so it doesn't chafe or doesn't touch. And the radiator here, there is a requirement of 1450, 25, 1450 that establishes what would be the maximum temperature that is allowed for the radiator uh, heat. And then we go to flammability analysis, okay? The materials that are close to that need to be demonstrated, need to be qualified in the flammability for the DO-160 for that temperature that will be exposed to during the operation of the COG. So, so this is one of the main difference that you have when you're talking about the, the gaseous system and the chemical system. So Absolutely. You need to do this kind of analysis for the chemical system that is not, uh, not applicable. It's not applicable for the for gases. It. The gases is, is never going to generate any kind of heat. Okay. So basically the, what, what the, the, the passenger oxygen system uh, uh, architecture comprises of, it will be like, I'll do a basic one. So there is an um, altimetric switch, an, an altitude sensor, that whenever the altitude, before it reaches 15,000 feet of cabin altitude, which is the requirement 1443 C1, the, so it senses the rise of the cabin altitude, sends a signal. So in case of camp oxygen generators, um, you know that they are located in the passenger service units, the PSUs. So the PSU is what you have when, they, when you arrive at the aircraft, where there is the flight attendant chime, where the, um, the, the lighting, sometimes the gasper, what everyone closes. Okay? But it's, it's over your head. Over your head. So okay. it's the overhead beam compartment, you have the PSUs. And one of them, you, you can also see there is a little a part, which is there is a, a, a door. So that door will open. How does it open? The, whenever there is a, a sensing of cabin altitude rise, the, the, the sensor will send a signal to energize the wiring that goes through. And the wiring goes and start energizing a latch. Each PSU has a latch. The latch is energized and it's not constantly energized. It's, a, it's a, the moment it, it, it's energized, it stops, energized, it opens and the, the circuit is, is discontinued, the amount of electrical uh, energy is discontinued. It's just enough time to open the doors. So the mask will deploy and the, each cabin occupant will pull the mask. Regardless, the moment you pull the mask, if there are two masks, three masks, four masks, uh, the oxygen will flow through all the masks, okay? So uh, there must be just one person sitting, if you're lucky enough, okay, <laughs> to have just one person sitting. You have more time. Uh, just you. you. So 
No, it doesn't matter because it will flow the same amount. It's a continuous flow. And then you have an automatic flow, which I told about the sensor. The, 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 the flight crew can also, uh, uh, because it's an N gauge, it's a, it's a, the 1447C1 says that must be automatically deployed above, above um, aircraft level, flight level 300. But there also, there must be a means to manually deploy it. Okay, so at the, the pilot's discretion. So it means that in the case, of, for example, failure of the masks is not deployed, so then the, the pilot can do that manually and... Uh, if the automatic, uh, automatic uh, system fails, it can be deployed manually. And so that's why, you know, when you do the full tree analysis, the loss of the oxygen system has to be an end gate with the loss of the manual and the, not a, never an or, and the loss of the, of the, of the, um, of the auto system. Okay. And then each PSU is connected to a latch and it deploys in the COG and the, and the masks itself. And can you mention about, I understood that the, the, the fire, uh, the heating of the, the chemical system is one of the challenges for certification because of the, the fire hazards. And can you mention about the other challenges that you, you have for... Well, there has been a challenge and for right after the, the September 11 and things like that, there has been major concern on how, how explosive can be, can be fabricated, okay, fabricated. And it was found out that the COG has a means to become a kind of explosive. So in order to become an explosive, someone has to open the door, okay, have access to the, to the COG, which is behind that door in the PSU, and do some kind of thing. I'm not a terrorist, so I cannot say what they can do, but they, they can do something that becomes an explosive. So now there is a new, a new requirement, which is, there has been a requirement in the past 10 years, which is a 795, 2595. EASA has one as well that talks about security considerations. And Delta, the, the, the letter D, specifically says that if it's not obvious, if it's not obvious that for the cabin crew or anyone uh, in the cabin to see that someone is tampering with the, with the, with the COG, that, that with the PSU and the COG, that we must not use the, the COG must have means to show like indication, something like that. We get some kind of indication system that someone is tampering, like they do with the smoke detection system. Okay. Uh, however, the only place that one can think that someone can tamper with without being obvious is laboratory. the laboratory. Okay, I was thinking about it. Yes. So then how do you resolve that? You put the gaseous system there or you so have the chemical system? The, the seven, have 795 never says put a gaseous system. It says, look, if you can demonstrate that it's it's obvious someone is tampering with, it's going to be very difficult in a laboratory to demonstrate it's obvious. As I said, the only means is to put some kind of indication system like happens with a smoke detection system. It's expensive, more design, more weight. So now we use gaseous. So, but it's not the big cylinder. It's a small cylinder at very high pressure, something like 3000 PSI. And then similar to the... Uh, uh, gas system for the crew, or what? What would be the main? No, no, no. There, are, there, there are no hoses. Okay, it's a sealed cylinder. It's just like the COG. It's an expendable. The moment you use it, you throw it away. Okay, so it's not. It cannot be refueled. Okay, but instead of a COG, you have a gaseous. The difference is that because of the amount of, because it would have to be a very large cylinder to be installed in the laboratory. The authorities accepted that the laboratories use a different kind of TSO for the for the system that is used in the cabin to be used in the in the in the laboratory. So in the cabins, usually you have the mask which is TSO sixty four alpha that complies directly with fourteen forty three C, and then you have the the TSO sixty four Bravo. We call it the mask, but it's the system as a whole. Okay, it's the reservoir plus the, it's, it's the flow consumption that matters, and it 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 meets the it, it, it complies with the oxygen saturation level, so it's a lower amount, it's a lower flow than the one that you have in the 1441-43C. So this is the main base, the basic difference between the TSOs. But uh, in terms of certification, what it exactly means? It means this, this TSO is not comply directly with the regulation, or it does the... not. It does not. So it does not meet the 1443C requirements, uh, flow requirements. Okay. So what it, it does is, we have an equivalent level of safety, 
and not only for laboratories. Now that we learn about laboratories, we have started so many OEMs. I myself participate in many, uh, uh, several nowadays. The cabin has started to use the TSO 64 Bravo mask system as well. Okay, so what we need to do is to show that this oxygen saturation level will provide the same level okay, of, of hypoxia protection. And to do that, test subjects are, are validated through, there's laboratory tests, the test, test subjects are exposed to all the altitude range that the, the oxygen is through the same pressures and volumes and flows that the 1443C shows uh, and has. So, and it has been shown that the, to tell the truth, the flow is higher or it meets or, or exceeds the one that TSO 64 alpha. What is the main benefit of this? Of this? Do you think that's a Wait. kind of a, a evolution of the requirement? It's an evolution. You, of course, you have to demonstrate a, a, a lot of aircraft has been using it and, um, and uh, it's a weight. There is a weight reduction. So the COG that we use for the, in case we use this kind of, of 64 Bravo, okay, with an exemption, uh, is, is we have a, a significant reduction in weight. Okay, so we know that weight is a huge thing okay, whenever we do the aircraft design. Okay, you mentioned, when you, in the, in the previous video, when you mentioned about the, the uh, crew oxygen system, you mentioned that the mask was a little bit different because the uh, mask for the crew protects against uh, smoke also and the hypoxia protection and the passenger not. So can you explain a little bit uh, the difference between this? That is the oxygen uh, it, that is supplied to the passenger is the same or how does the mask work? For, I would say the first, the crew oxygen mask is a demand mask which means that whenever you put at 100% or maybe even normal mode, 100 mode or 100% mode or normal mode, the, 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 the oxygen is only, uh, uh, only flows when, it, when, when the, 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 the crew inhales it, okay? The passenger oxygen mask is a continuous flow, okay? Regardless of what you're doing, the flow will continue being provided. Okay. Second, the, 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 the crew mask is a TSO C99, which is, makes it a protective breathing equipment for sedentary use, protects against smoke. The passenger oxygen mask does not protect against smoke at all because it contains the whole oxygen that the crew needs is provided by 100%. The, the, the cabin has the amount of oxygen that is provided in the COG plus an additional amount of oxygen that comes from the cabin air. So there is a dilution valve. So it's not so 100%. It's, it's not 100%. Oh. The, amount, the oxygen that is provided is 100% oxygen, but it's always diluted with the oxygen from the cabin. Okay, thank you. For this so that's why you don't have any kind of smoke protection for that. And one of the things is whenever we do like the cockpit smoke evacuation or some kind of smoke, okay, we have to show that the, the, the mask will not deploy, that the, the, the aircraft will have a descent rate and the cabin of two rise will be such that it never reaches the 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 the, the, the altimetric switch set point, okay, to deploy the masks. We don't want oxygen, okay, flowing in a in a in a in so a fire environment. People will not also inhale. That no, no, process. and it's useless. Okay, yeah. you, you cannot do that. Felipe, and there is any uh, uh, safety consideration, other safety considerations consider uh, about the passenger uh, oxygen that, system? That's a very good question. Okay, so I would think of particular risk analysis. The crew oxygen system usually, whenever you use a gas system, you have the what we call the pressure vessel burst analysis, which is a particular risk analysis. For the passenger oxygen system, one that I can think of is either like one third fragments or intermediate fragments for the in case of rotor non containment. Okay, so we know that wing mountain engines, there is no way that a wing, uh, that it's going to happen. So it's, we have to demonstrate, like the particular risk analysis says that we cannot violate the independence of one system with the other one. So if the rotor, if the rotor fragment heats the line, electrical, electrical um, cord, electrical wiring, okay, for the, the U's that provides them the, the, the oxygen to one of the, it has to be, it's just one, okay, of the, of the, one of the aisles, and then, so outside of the, of the range where the fragments heat, there must be a loop, okay, so that if you lose a line, 
this loop will still provide en enough electrical um, energization for the masks to deploy. Okay, okay. we must never uh, the, the the cabin occupants must never be uh, deprived of supplemental oxygen in case of rodent and containment. It's a structural structural damage. It yeah. means that you need to duplicate so that uh, it will be okay even in the case of uh, a structural damage that you... Which is what the particular risk analysis shows that there is going. we're going to lose the oxygen uh, system in the cabin. We have to redesign so that we still provide the oxygen in case of rodent and containment. And the other one that I can think about is one failure condition that is the loss of oxygen for, uh, combined with the loss of pressurization. In case of crew oxygen system, the, the severity criterially is assigned, categorized as catastrophic. There is no discussion about it. Okay. In case of the of the pressure oxygen system, we categorize as catastrophic, and there must be there are ways of showing to the um, there are ways of showing that the aircraft descent rate and things like that, even if we use interim pilots for the structural damage, that they can reach within not six minutes to 10,000 feet because the cabin occupants do not need 10,000 feet, but something like 13,000 feet in case of structural damage or dual engine, single engine, whatever is the most critical one, the, the cabin occupants will not be exposed to what we call critical oxygen partial pressures, something like 22 to 25 millimeters of mercury, okay? If they are exposed for a long time, like two, three minutes, there's going to be damage. So the hazardous except they're going to have some some fatalities, okay? So but the majority. We, but then we have to discuss that with authority. We propose catastrophic. I mean, the OEM proposes catastrophic, and throughout the design of the system, if there are there is margin to demonstrate that through oxygen partial pressure or emergency descent or compliance with interim policy, we can downgrade to hazardous. This is a good thing that. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, just uh, for uh, us to finalize, and, and ETOPS. I know the oxygen system is, is critical for ETOPS certification. So can you just. Oxygen uh, system is the villain for ETOPS. They always, people, but we, we have to understand something like that. ETOPS, whoever defines the ETOPS 120, 180 operation is performance. So the few critical scenarios established can be like, I don't know, single engine. Uh, combined with loss of pressurization. Let's say that this is the critic, fuel critical scenario. If performance tells the designer, the, the, the engineer, that the aircraft can do 120 minutes, 180 minutes at 10,000 feet, we don't have to do any retrofit. If it says, no, we're going to have to have to fly at 15,000 feet or 18,000 feet for fuel saving, something like that. So uh, sometimes what is a chemical system needs to be retrofitted to a gas system. Okay, okay so, so that you that, can that comply with the time. So it's, and sometimes we, we have to say, look, I can fly, a, you can fly up to 19,000 feet. People usually want to fly above. Oh, but you have supplemental oxygen, but above 20,000 feet, depressurized, you have the problem with compression sickness, which is the amount of nitrogen that is in your tissues, which is, it's not, it's, it's even worse than hypoxia. Okay, so yes, uh, I've worked with several uh, designs on, on ETOX and some of them, Nothing had to be done. The other ones, there a gas system was necessary for the cabin occupants. So they need to change their whole system. They change the whole system. Them. Yeah, we have the whole the whole design, the whole architecture, and then everything that complies with the crew oxygen system needs to comply with the passenger oxygen system, considering the gases. Everything that we talk on the crew oxygen system will have to be analyzed under the standard for the cabin occupants. Okay. Okay, Felipe, thank you very much. Uh, so. Just to finalize, do you want to say some final considerations? I just want to say two things that I like. I mean, uh, we, we know it's been different, uh, difficult nowadays. So I'd like to say that uh, Richard Feynman, that uh, was a famous uh, physics for, for NASA, he's the one that shows what happened with the Challenger. Uh, I would say that he, he has that, he, said, uh, he had a quote that was something like that. In technology, reality takes precedence over public relations. So because nature cannot be fooled. And the other one is Karl Popper, who was the, 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 the philosopher, a master philosopher, who talks about the empirical evidence. Okay? So he would say, if you do not understand, if you have only one explanation for theory, either you do not understand the theory or you do not understand your solution. So design an aircraft is very complicated. What I'm going to tell you is that I hope you never need to use the oxygen system. Okay? But the oxygen system is designed, okay? 
in case of for for everything so people are always worried about the oxygen oh because the bag is not inflated pay attention to what the cabin occupants are telling you during the briefing that helps a lot okay and second i mean the amount of oxygen is calculated for everyone the the, the system is designed for you to do it because we always have to have one thing is never have hubris okay never have hubris Okay, and we always have to learn how to question things when we design the system, any system. Okay, history has shown that whenever people get rid, like Nero got rid of Seneca, when Caesar started using his hubris, when Richard III used, used the, the, the stick offense to defend him, there was always an issue. Okay, so it's very difficult. So, sense of criticism, transparency are very important when designing the system, not only oxygen, but all the other ones. So that's what I'd like to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. It's it was, it's always a pleasure. It's always very nice. Okay. Okay, thank you. And if you like this video and want to know more about the passenger oxygen system or other environmental systems, you can con and want to contact Philippe directly, his contact information is in the description area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Mas você viu que a gente tá fazendo prática? Tá ótimo. Eu acho que a gente, olha, se eu fizesse mais um, a gente não ia nem treinar. Eu vou mandar o um recado da minha avó, então. Ela achou, nossa, essas... Mas assim, depois você me mande o outro com a outra. Como é que eu mando a outra menina? Eu falei, é Rafaela. Pô. Essa é Clarice. Ela não, ela não esquece. Você sabe que ela sabe o nome de todos? Ela sabe o nome do padre que fez a primeira comendo dela. Que coisa bonitinha. Ela sabe, ela até hoje, ela tem 101 anos de idade, ela sabe o aniversário, o dia e, a, e o ano de todos os filhos, todos os genros, todas as noras, todos os netos, todas as bisnetas. Você sabe que eu vou chegar até a cidade dessa Não, eu não quero, eu não vou chegar. Eu já estou a gagar, 